My name is Tim Graff, and uh, I'm the uh, operator of Graff Family Farms, uh, just west of Beatrice. We farm uh, 1,700 approximately acres. Uh, that's land that I own, my parents own, my brother, and then uh, ground that we cash rent. We used to grow <laughs> wheat and milo, but as the uh, years have gone by, we've switched to a, a corn and soybean rotation. We will spray all of our acres twice. Uh, once as a pre-plant, um, and then a post spray to follow up. So we're doing a split application each year. We used to have a, uh, a band spray on the planter. And then as time went by, I shifted to a broadcast band on the planter. Then going into soybeans, we would hire it done by our local cooperative. Um, <clears throat> The, let's see, two years ago I uh, changed planters to a 16 row planter and I did not want to spray as I plant anymore because we learned the efficiency would be so much better if we just plant, plant, plant and then either let the cooperative spray or get a, a boom of my own, which I decided to do. So for the last two years I was using a 60 foot tractor mounted boom using the tanks I already had but it wasn't as efficient as I knew I could be. With the first sprayer on the planter, <laughs> uh, I was having to stop about every 23 acres. And you just weren't getting a lot of acres planted or acres sprayed. And again, I did have to hire out for broadcasting on our bean acres because we were using a 20-foot uh, no-till planter and I didn't have the spraying attachments for that. Efficiency-wise, I'm able to spray when I want to spray. I don't, you know, if it's a little windier than I like it to be, I can stop and I know that the next time it's not as windy, I'll be able to get out to my acres. So with the cooperative, there were, there were many times, nothing against cooperative, but they have to cover a lot of acres on days that they may not want to be out there or the days that I wouldn't want them to be out there. So they do a few tricks like shift over a few rows so the drift might carry it to the edge of the field. Uh, and I did not like that. Um, you let some cockleburrs get by on your end rows, you're just going to spread them right back into the field. So with the Apache, I got to where I knew exactly where the edge of the field was and I've been able to spray when it's the right time to spray and efficiently cover those acres. And if I saw a patch that I missed the last time, I'm able to just go out to that one part of that one field without having to pay somebody to spray the whole field or a larger part of the field because they're not going to come out for a touch-up. And I can go out for a touch-up. When you look at the cost of a commercial sprayer, you have to figure that that also includes diesel and their time. So if I take a look at my time, um, I have to put a value to that. And what I have found so far is that being able to spray when it's the right time to spray, uh, my time is very valued. So I feel that I'm doing a better job, a, a more timely job, than I would have relying on a custom applicator. So in terms of the cost savings, I know with the 60-foot boom and the computer, I was able to pay for that the first year just in application cost. Um, so far this year, I haven't put a pencil to it. I'm just too new of an owner. <laughs> so uh, at this point, I don't exactly know. I haven't been able to break down the cost for a comparison. I do know that I'm, I'm spending less time uh, spraying my fields, and that's, that's got to be a good thing. Well, I, I, I think I saw my first Apache sprayer at a No-Till on the Plains conference in uh, Kansas a few years back. and. Uh, just the fact that it was a mechanical drive as opposed to a hydrostatic, which made it uh, more uh, efficient for fuel um, and also made it simpler than having a lot of, of uh, drive components that you would have with a hydrostatic model, uh, impressed me a whole lot. Um, last fall when I decided that uh, it was time to shift from a tractor mount to a self-propelled, I compared several different sprayers. I first actually started looking at used sprayers, and uh, of course, I kept coming back to Apache. 
Comparing the cost of a brand new unit as opposed to something that was used and been through some hours, I thought, I can afford a brand new Apache with, with nobody else's troubles. Uh, you know, because whenever you buy used, you're buying somebody else's uh, abuse <laughs> or mis mistreatment. But uh, um, looking at the features that the Apache had, uh, I was much more comfortable buying a brand new, uh, this brand new unit as opposed to finding a, a less expensive unit with another brand name uh, that was out on the market. If you try to, to spray uh, at a 90 degree angle to your rows with a tractor without suspension, um, you'll have what happened to me, the, uh, the, the mount on the, on the uh, hitch uh, for, the, uh, for the boom sprayer fell off. I mean, that's a lot of bouncing. But between the suspension for the tires, the suspension that's on the rack on the Apache, I'm able to glide across the field at 90 degree angles to cut down on, uh, you know, you, you just do a better job. Um, I'm able, I was, the most I was, the fastest I was able to drive with my tractor mounted was eight miles per hour. <laughs> with the Apache the other day, I was trying to beat a rain. Uh, I was going at 12. And I was very comfortable and I was gliding through the fields. Now I was going with the row, but I was very comfortable staying in the row uh, and not running over my crop. Again, I, I'm so efficient with this machine. We've been able to do about half of our corn acres in one day. So we're doing about 450 acres on a pretty good day. Again, I haven't had a chance to break down the numbers. I did look comparing my 60-foot boom and tractor from a year ago uh, for just pre-plant corn. I was a little surprised I had the same number of gallons uh, of diesel used. I had the same number of engine hours, but the difference was it took me a full week to do those same acres of corn that took me two days to do with the Apache. Just like I thought I'd never get used to 60-foot, I didn't think I'd get used to 90 foot very well. And uh, actually this is a 60-90 boom. And when I open up a field, I'm more comfortable starting with the tips in. So, because that's what I'm used to spraying, 60 foot. And I, I hit less trees when I have it on the 60 foot. Now, as I gain more experience, I'm sure I'll be able to open up fields wider. With the suspension and the air ride seat, uh, the cab is very comfortable. It's a very smooth ride. Um, even when I accidentally run over some washboarding, um, the, the, the suspension takes care of an awful lot of that. Um, it's a roomy cab, I'm very comfortable that way. I kind of wish there was just a little more room so that once in a while I could take my brother in the cab to get from point A to point B um, uh, for, what, for whatever reason, but it's, it's not high on my list. Um, you don't want passengers because you've got so much going on, you need to pay attention. Um, the, uh, the glass where the support structure is for uh, the cab support, um, the rollover protection, you know, very, very well placed. I understand the models before this had a different kind of cab that it was hard to see the end of the booms. So I, I'm glad I didn't have to experience that. I'm kind of spoiled, I guess I'd say. I think the clearance is really great. Um, it's, it's way better than, than the tractor mounted sprayer that I had because you know you were limited and, and fact is I wasn't post spraying my corn for the last two years just because of that fact. I didn't feel comfortable knocking down or, or injuring the corn so I, I had that hired. This allows me to do and has allowed me to post my corn. Uh, as far as the height of corn if I needed to come in for a rescue operation at some point uh, I, I'd be a little nervous about that but that that goes with the territory no matter whose sprayer you're using. I think I'm getting a good quality machine for the dollars that I've put into it. Um, comparing a few other new models, uh, I, you know, I don't want to name names, but obviously with the hydrostatic options, they can be very expensive, uh, and there's an awful lot of machine there. Um, I was toying with the idea of a uh, thousand gallon tank, but then I thought about our fields and, and the possibility of being in soft fields, and I, at the time I wasn't that wild about it. I think the next time I trade, I would probably go with a 1010 model.
because I, I would like to have the option of covering more ground on, on a fill than, than what I have here. But um, I, I guess engineering-wise and dollar-wise, I think I'm getting a good product for my value. I think it's very well designed, very well built. I don't feel like it's going to fall apart for silly things like a, a, a bolt falling out or something. But it's a sturdy machine and, and uh, uh, the fact that the breakaways are there on both the 60 foot uh, tip and at the 90 foot tip, um, it's just, it, I think it will take more abuse than I hope I give it. <laughs> My biggest concern has been timely spraying and going from a 60 foot tractor mounted boom to a 6090 self propelled Apache it's just made a lot of sense for my farming operation. I am trying to position myself to be able to make that next jump. We have more neighbors that are going to be retiring over the next few years, and I still hope to farm for another 20 years myself. So I'm positioning myself to be able to cover more acres without working harder, if that's possible. <laughs> but the Apache has given me the ability to, to know that the next window of opportunity I have to spray, I can be out there getting the job done in a timely fashion, killing the weeds that need to be killed, and doing a good job of crop protection. I would recommend the Apache sprayer to any of my neighbors. Um, the, the only question would be how large of one to get.